In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie a great steel head pattern, the mole. So first, we'll need to, to build a, a little setup just to make sure that we have two hooks, one behind the other. So you can do this very easily with a, a piece of wood that will hold your uh, second vise or anything that would, could hold the rear hook firmly. And also, we'll need uh, a flexible glue. You can use the ExoFlex. Uh, which has to be very, uh, this is a kind of flexible glue. You can use also the, the tear bender, which is recommended for this kind of pattern, uh, or any other kind of flex, uh, flex glue that you would find on the market. Also, we'll need a, a section of backing, a decron, with a distance about three inches, which is about five to six uh, centimeter that we'll need to fold into to make sure that the uh, the rear hook is uh, hold uh, is held uh, firmly so we'll need to make the thread go through the first hook the front hook and then we're going to tie the second one so just to make the task uh, easier i'm going to use a, a threader or a small or a thin wire and we're just going to make sure that the decron is coming through the, through the eye and that we have enough material to reach the rear hook alright so let's take our tying thread and let's secure the front uh, the front thread the front, the, uh, the front backing so it's going to be easier to just tie the thread and then uh, re-slip the backing so let's cover the hook shank make very tight wraps we'll need to have a good grip of the backing on the hook shank don't go further than the, the tip of the of the hook cut the excess of thread then uh, redo what we we did previously just slip uh, the threader in the eye make sure that the loop is going through the, uh, the the front hook make it very tight just to secure the, the, the first layer of Dacron on top of the hook shank and then fold the other one under the hook shank. It's very important that you fold it through the eye just making sure that the, that the pattern will be really uh, will be uh, secure and uh, the, the Dacron or backing won't slip. So this is what the pattern should look like at this point. And then we're going to cut the excess of backing. There we go. So at this point we can apply more pressure. Let me just show that, uh, as you can see, that there's enough room behind the in the eye, so you can uh, thread any other uh, leader. So just cover the front hook with very tight wraps of thread. There we go. This is a very good pattern that could be good not only for for steelhead, but I'm sure uh, for pike or a smaller size for for bass. So then, what we'll need what we'll need to do is to slip again the backing through the the hook. I'm just going to switch the hook I'm, that I used previously for a hook with the upright eye. Otherwise, the the movement of the of the pattern won't be the same. So let's remove this hook. And let's replace it with the, uh, the upright eye hook. So let's just bring it closer so we have enough uh, material to, to slip the backing in, uh, through the eye. So once again, I'm going to use my, uh, my threader. Let's put the loop right through it. We'll need to apply more pressure because the the eye of this hook is a small is a one size smaller than the front one is a size four, and the front hook is a size two. Let me just apply more pressure. Here we go. Let me just show you what we're gonna do next. We're gonna open the loop. We're gonna open the loop of the rear hook, so we can slip the hook through it. So let's remove the hook from the vise pull the loop from behind make sure that the, the loop don't uh, don't come out so just pull the loop through the hook like this 
so it is lock on the hook shank like this not more complicated than that so when we're going to apply the pressure to pull the thread it's going to lock the material on the hook there we go so let's put the the hook back in the vise let me just fix this Perfect. All right. Then we're going to pull the uh, the front hook just to separate everything and apply your tension on the backing. This is very important that you have a good tension between uh, both hooks, otherwise you have a hard time to to wrap the uh, the rabbit strip. So we're just going to give some loose to the to the rear hook like this, just to allow us to slip the the rabbit strip. So for that we're going to use a cross cut rabbit strip. Let me just uh, adjust the It is very important when you going to the, the way you you slip the skin or the the, the rabbit strip. It is very important that the uh, the skin has to be a cross cut rabbit strip. This is very this is the first thing that you you may have to make sure this is a cross cut rabbit strip. And that the the skin, the bare skin, is going to be facing the uh, the hook. What's what you have to look at on your side is the, the the fur covering the skin. So just slip a section about maybe half an inches, half an inch, excuse me, maybe uh, one centimeter, and then just apply the pressure, just to lock the skin like this. This is all you have to do. This is why you need a good setup to keep a good tension between both uh, both hooks. There we go. Let me just adjust the, the camera. And then the technique we'll have to do it's only to wrap the uh, the rabbit strip on the backing. Just and you have to make sure that on each turn you don't overlap the previous turn always in front of the previous one. Very important, don't overlap the previous turn. So just uh, I'm just showing you the, the technique. We're gonna apply the glue in a few a few seconds. So just unwrap everything and then we're gonna use for this uh, pattern the tear mender. So you, ap you apply a small coat. Don't apply too much directly on the skin and don't cover the whole skin. Just maybe uh, one or two inches which is about three or four centimeter so you won't have the uh, the, the, the glue you won't let it glue, uh, get uh, dry too quickly so just cover a section on the skin and on the backing itself there we go just to give you an idea and then we're gonna start tying or wrapping the skin. Just make sure that you don't grab the, uh, the little section uh, sticking out like this and you bring the skin forward don't overlap on the previous section. As you can see there's maybe a little bit too much glue so we're gonna remove a, we're gonna remove a little section like this. There we go. I'm gonna let it dry and I'm going to apply a little bit more because there was a, there was too much glue. So just go gently like this. Keep a good tension on the skin. Very important. Hold it. Hold the rear hook with your left fingers and bring the material forward like this. There we go. We're going to apply more glue. This is a very simple pattern. It's a, it's a great pattern. The the mole pattern, which is an acronym for the mother of all leech, has been a very great pattern. You're going to see that uh, once the pattern is done, it has lots of movement. It is different from uh, any other kind of leech that you you have tied before. So once again, we're going to apply more glue. I'm just going to focus the, the camera so you can see better. Go. So we're going to cover for the remaining skin and backing with the glue. There we go. So keep wrapping 
the, cra the, the cross cut rabbit strip. We have the habit of always tying a black leaf, but this could be a great pattern tied in a chartreuse, a olive, a brown. A very good uh, pattern. So as you reach the last wrap, we're going to make one or two wraps on the backing right before covering the hook shank. As you can see, I'm using very short shank, short shank, excuse me. So don't use long shank uh, hook for this type of pattern. So let's move the thread out of the way. And let's cover the uh, the hook shank. There we go. There's no need for glue at this point. You can apply it if you want to. Just keep a good tension. Make sure you have enough material to cover. And you'll need to leave at least one eye distance between the skin, or the, the rabbit strip, and the eye itself. Because we'll need to, to tie some uh, a pair of dumbbells, double eyes. So we leave at least one eye distance. Very important. There we go. And we're gonna secure. Keep a good keep a good tension on the skin. Then apply a good tension on the thread. Make a few wraps right in front of it. There we go. A few more wraps directly on the skin. Just to lock everything like this. Alright. Then we're gonna cut the excess. Perfect. Before going further, we're just going to do a, a quick change. I'm going to change for a red thread. So let's make a quick uh, whip finish knot. And we're going to replace it with the, the red one. We're just going to cover the, the black thread. There we go. We're going to also prepare to, to place, to sit the, the dumbbells high. Let's cut the excess of thread. So then, take a regular dumbbells highs, just slip it on the thread, and then place it or sit it right on top of the hook shank, at midpoint between the eye and the, the rabbit strip. So make a, lots of crisscross uh, crisscross uh, with your thread just make sure it is really aligned in the middle like this so you just cover with your thread once it is secure you complete with your whip finish knot there we go once more just to make sure that uh, it will stay in place there we go cut the excess of thread Then at this point, we're going to apply one or two coats of head cement just to make sure that uh, we protect the thread, we'll keep the, the eyes in place, and we let it dry. Once it is dry, remove both hooks from the vices. There we go. You'll notice that the, it might have the tendency to unwind or untwist, so let it go, let it place itself. And then we're going to remove the front hook. There we go. So just make sure everything is uh, is dry. If it's not, just let it dry. Once it is, we're going to cut the front hook. So just remove the, the, the fur out of the way. Just make sure that you see clearly the, the hook bend. And cut it very close to the skin. Not too close to uh, unwind everything. There we go, so you can twist it on itself just to make it keep in shape. So this is it. The mole is complete.